need some water already. Look how big this thing is. Hey everybody, Alexander Morgan here, but my friends call me Schmorgel. So a couple weeks ago, I flew to New York City to record some music. Like, to record music in a, in a place with other people. <laughs> I know, I can't believe it either. The experience was honestly tremendous for the obvious reasons. I haven't traveled in over a year, so that alone was really nuts. What's more is I used to live in New York and uh, I made a lot of music while I was living there. Seeing as things were beginning to open up again and I had a lot of miles backed up, I decided to pull the trigger and record some music in my favorite studio on this planet, Riff Studios. I actually saw it in its inception in its early years, back when it was held together by a few planks of wood on the floor and a wish. I remember my early 20s getting off my super long waiting gig and getting on the, uh, the G train and taking it like 50 minutes out to the middle of nowhere Brooklyn. But this whole recent trip back was more than just nostalgia. I am recording a bunch of new music, like music beyond this EP I've been promising you now for months. This is like the next EP, the second EP. But you may be asking, why go all the way to New York just to record music when you've gotten decent enough at recording music in your own room? There's something that you just can't capture in your own room that a studio can, a live energy. This is why I met up with a few musician friends of mine out there and rehearsed in a real room together in one place. Then we had just a few days to track everything and I mean, it was just an absolute blast. I loved every second of it. All this to say, I recorded a little bit of my process and I figured I'd share it with y'all. I actually didn't record nearly as much as I thought I was going to, but that just goes to show that I really got lost in the process. We did about a week of recording, all like seven to eight hour days. Again, I loved every second of it. And I figured for kind of educational purposes, but mostly just for people who are interested, I'd take you on a little bit of that journey, show you what it's like for a bedroom producer to record in a real studio with real people. I mean, this is a vlog. This is a vlog video. It's, it's a sort of vlog. TM, TM. I started my journey by flying to New York, which I don't have footage of because I was kind of terrified to fly again <laughs> and I didn't film it. And just sticking to all the protocols and being safe, it didn't feel right to be like, yo, what's up YouTube, I'm black, blah. So at first I was just hanging with some people, catching up a bit. I went on that old run that I used to do in Central Park. Fun fact, it's the same run that I collected all those sounds for falling forward all those years ago. I hired my buddies, Max Maples and Brian Percival, who are excellent, awesome musicians. They had the tracks in advance, so they were all prepared, and our job was to fill them out with some live energy. Here's a little bit of that process and some sneak peek into some of these newer songs. Maybe it's a matter of keeping a hi-hat thing going. Then it was studio time. One of my goals was to allot enough time for just complete experimentation and total creative risk. It's the most dramatic shot of bagels. Recording in a studio, believe it or not, costs money. So sometimes it's not the best to come in ill-prepared or to, to not have a game plan. It's higher production value gets less views in my experience. But I also find that when you regiment it too much, you can end up getting in your own way a little bit. So having a few hours to try some weird techniques uh, was really beneficial for me. This inevitably involved recording a lot to tape. The first few days were actually a lot of retracking and pumping a lot of these VSTs through a tape machine to give it a little bit more warmth and authenticity. That side won't do it. Cool.
I was kind of married to my janky demo guitars. So we decided to retract them. We pumped them through these speakers, these Genelec speakers in the live room, and then set up mics in the room and in the hallway to create like a natural reverb and capture real space. Snares are rattling. Oh my God, that's so funny. <laughs> Finally, the boys came in and we got to work on the full band stuff. I wanted to live track drums and bass together so we had that more band-like feel. Don't touch that. Okay. Do do? One of the biggest risks we took was kind of flipping the methodology of live tracking drums. Usually you want them in a big room, usually called a live room for that exact reason. You hear the bounce, the live drums in a, in a large space. We packed the drums in the tiniest isolation booth that we could. Look at those hot kicks, man. Look at that those fire shoes. We then dialed in a really tight compression, so the drums felt really close. You could play quietly, but it would still feel impactful. Our thinking was that it would help merge the drum machine and the live drums a little bit better when I dove back into production. I wound up working beautifully. I love the tone we got out of that thing, and it was so cool to see a creative risk pay off. We then plopped Brian in the live room where he had more than enough space to record synths and, and bass guitar. I finally sat down, stopped playing producer, and started playing guitar. Here we go. Oh my god! Oh uh, yeah, it does that. <laughs> <laughs> Take one. Okay. <laughs> more buddies showed up, I got super distracted and it kind of fell apart from there. What the yeah. is that? Uh, what up, brother? What's up, oh Meaning God. I didn't really film much else. I really just wound up having so much fun and I didn't even think to record the process because I was just in the moment, man. A good problem to have, ultimately. Anyway, I know this is not much, but hopefully it was interesting to see a little glimpse into my process when in a studio setting. In case you're interested, these songs probably won't see the light of day until the end of the year. I still gotta release the other batch of stuff first. I promise it's coming soon. I keep putting it off, but legit any day now. I'm just really excited to share it and I hope it's sooner than later. And just as a heads up, I will be taking next week off uh, cause it's my birthday. <laughs> Turn in the big three zero. And uh, you know, as I ring in this decade, Holy sh I just wanna really be present for it and not be worrying about releasing some stuff. So forgive me as I take a, a little bit of a break. That being said, I got a bunch of stuff recorded that I'm really excited to edit and share with y'all. Should I do more vlogs? Should I become a full-time sort of vlogger? Low effort feels really good. In the meantime, if you like this video, give it a like. Dislikes also okay, but you know, likes better. Either way, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell so you know when I put out videos. And if you don't do it, I'll cry. Bye.